Praise the Lord, say. Let everything that has breath praise He, the Lord. God is good and His mercy endures to all generations. Let's give God a hand clap of a praise this morning. We thank the Lord for His Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to thank you all for joining us for our revival on this day. We just ask the Holy Spirit just to have this way. And our radio station will be 88.7 FM. And if you would like to take your lounge chairs out, if you want to get outside, out of your car, or even if you want to sit in, just let the Holy Spirit have its way. Amen. We just welcome you to Rehoboth Baptist Church where Dr. Ivory T. Thigpen is our pastor. Amen. And we just pray for him and his family much. We know that he's here in spirit with us on today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we will have our selection by our Rehoboth Baptist Church voice of prayer. And then I'll be back before you. After the morning prayer by Deaconess Linda Cunningham. Amen. 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 Y'all, we came to praise him this morning. Y'all ready to praise? Amen, amen. And join in and sing with us.
Hallelujah. He's worthy, y'all. Anybody know he's worthy? From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, he's worthy. Join me in prayer. Oh, God. Oh, God. You are so holy. You are so holy. And we come praising your name, dear Lord. Oh, great I am. We love you, Lord, this day. As we come this month of July, doing revival. Dear Lord, we just ask that you send your Holy Spirit, Lord. Spread it all around us. Those that are in the cars, those that are, are in the uh, viewers. Dear Lord, bless them. Guide them. Let them know that you are God. You are God, dear Lord. You are almighty. You are Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. Dear Lord, you have been our protector. You have been our provider. Lord, you're still our healer. Dear Lord, and we trust you and we give it all to you. Dear Lord, somebody here needs a healing today. And we just let them know that you are in the midst and you are the greatest doctor there is, dear Lord. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs a financial blessing, dear Lord. But whatever they need, dear Lord, let them know. Let them feel your presence today, Lord. Let them know that you are God. Dear Lord, help us to be that beacon of light. That beacon of light in a world that needs you more than ever before. Dear Lord, we need your presence. We need your peace. Dear Lord, we need your love. Help us to be kind and loving towards one another. Dear Lord, bring us together in unity and help us stand strong no matter what Satan sent our way, dear Lord. Knowing that you're still on the throne. You are still our God, dear Lord. And we trust you. And we love you, dear Lord. And we ask for you just to dwell among us this day, dear Lord, as we come to celebrate you on this Holy Communion Day, dear Lord, doing this in remembrance of you. Dear Lord, we ask that you add a special blessing to all the ones at the sound of my voice and the families of those at the sound of my voice. We ask a special blessing for the speaker today, dear Lord. Give him a word from you. Dear Lord, bless his family. Dear Lord, hide him so that we can hear you speak through him, dear Lord. He is a powerful man of God. He is your servant, dear Lord, and we bless your name for him today. We ask for a special blessing for our pastor and his family, dear Lord, and his travels. Dear Lord, we just ask for a special blessing for the, uh, the um, leaders of this church. Dear Lord, there are some of us who are sick. There are some of us who are just being released from the hospital. Dear Lord, I'm, I'm not going to call any names because you know who they are. And I don't want to leave anybody out. But praise God that they know you. And I ask for a special blessing, a special healing. Let them know that you got this. No matter what may be going on, you got this. And Lord, we praise your name. We praise your name because we know we do. Help us to trust more, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And help us to be more faithful. Dear Lord, you are all that i ever been, all that I'll ever be. I owe it to you, dear Lord. And we ask, we give all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise just to you, dear Lord, because you're so worthy of it. You so deserve it. In the precious, precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 We would just like to thank Dickens Cunningham for that wonderful, sincere prayer. And we would just like to thank our Rehoboth Baptist Church Choir for singing those beautiful songs. And we just thank you. We're here to be revived today. We invite you to just join us, whether you're watching by YouTube, Facebook, or however by social media. We just want to welcome you to let the Holy Spirit have its way today. Amen. We're here. 
to seek God, to worship God, to let him be God all by himself today. So we just want your souls just to meditate and enjoy this service today. Amen. Amen and amen. Hello, I'm Dr. Ivory T. Thigpen, pastor of the Rehoboth Baptist Church here in Columbia, South Carolina. We want to thank you for tuning in to our worship experience. We know that our worship would not be the same without you. As you continue to connect with us via the worship experience, we also want to remind you that you also can connect with us through giving. There are five ways in which you can give. You can give by mailing your tithes or offerings to the church. You can place them in an envelope and place them here at the church via a drop-in mailbox or in the actual service itself with baskets in the back. You can download the Givelify app, create an account, and give via your bank account. You can also text RBC4646 to 73256. And finally, you can download the Realm app, create an account, and then again give also by your bank account. We want to thank you for again tuning in and enjoy the rest of this worship service. Now we will have our introduction of our guest speaker, our revivalist for today. Can I get an amen or a honking of your horns? Can I get a wave today? Are you ready for the word? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to introduce you to one who knows the word of God and can preach the word of God and can rightly divide the word of God. Amen. Amen. His name is Warren Hartley, Pastor Warren Hartley. And he is pastor of Rock Hill Baptist Church in Ridgeway, South Carolina. Since 2017, he is married to the former Bianca Free, and they have two children, Brandon and Lauren. He attended the University of South Carolina, Webster University, and has studied at Erskine Theological Seminary. Amen? He accepted his calling into the ministry in the fall of 2004 and was licensed to preach in the fall of 2007 at New Mount Zion Baptist Church in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Warren was ordained while serving as an associate minister at Rehoboth Baptist Church in South Carolina under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Ivory T. Thinkpen. So he's no stranger to us. He's one of us. Amen? Amen. His personal mission is to live his life in constant pursuit of Christian ecstasy. To praise God by how he responds to what is allowed in his life. Both good and bad. To love his family and his fellow man and to steward well the resources that God has provided for him. So after our Rehoboth Baptist Church Choir give us a selection, our voices of praise, we will have none than our own Pastor Warren Hartley with the message. Hear he the words of the Lord. <laughs> Good morning, Rehoboth. Once again, I am glad to be here this morning. We've had so many earthquakes, whether you felt them or not. We had them. But God is still in control. I don't know about you, but Jesus is my rock. We ain't going to make nobody mad but the devil. So if you all can help me sing this song. Again, let's make the devil mad. Oh, Ezekiel said he saw him as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Some talked about him in the book of the seventh seal. Some call him the rose of Sharon. Others call him the prince of peace. But Oh, 
call him the Rose of Sharon. Oh, yeah. Others call him the Prince of Peace. Oh, yes. But Church say amen. Let the church say amen. One more time for the Holy Spirit. How many of you can say Jesus is your rock this morning? That no matter how much the earth shakes beneath you, no matter how bad things get around you, you stand on the solid rock that is Christ this morning. And nothing can shake you. Nothing can move your faith. Yes, I stand on Christ as well. It is so good to be here to stand before you this morning. Uh, I am so grateful to be able to look upon you, uh, to be back home as it as they have just said to you. Uh, I, I want to first thank uh, God for bringing me here. I want to thank Pastor Thigpen for allowing me to come back. Uh, we also ask that you uh, send your prayers to him and his family while they're away so that they might safely return here. I also want to say a special thanks to uh, Reverend Cunningham who is filling in for me at Ro uh, Rock Hill this morning. So thank you, Sister Cunningham, for letting him get away. Uh, I, we pray that he is blessed this morning as well. Uh, before I get started, I want you to turn your Bibles. We won't keep you very long this morning. I know that uh, being outside is a little different. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel, the 10th chapter, 1 Samuel, and we'll start reading at verse 5. 1 Samuel, 10th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. 
Make your word there. When you have it, say amen with your smart devices or your Bible. Uh, or you can just honk your horn and let me know you're already there. Amen. Got some Bible readers. First Samuel chapter 10, New English, New International Version this morning for your hearing. We will read from there to verse 9. And my Bible reads, After that you will go to Gibeah of God, where there is a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you will meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, timbrels, pipes, and harps being played before them. And they will be, uh, they will be prophesying. The prophet, the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you. and You will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to, till I come to you and tell you what you are to do. Verse 9. As Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart, and all these signs were fulfilled that day. Let us pray. Father God, we pray right now that you will come in with us, that you will uh, work your power in us, that we might have ears to hear, a mind to do and that we might receive all that you have for us on this day and that we might follow this message with doing your work and your will. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of your, my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray all of God's people say amen, amen. This morning I want to preach from the topic transformed for a new assignment. Transformed for a new assignment. So this morning we come to this 10th chapter in 1 Samuel and we see Saul who is to be king of all of Israel. His father has misplaced, lost some donkeys and so Saul is sent out with a servant that he might find the donkeys. And so Saul is diligently searching for the donkeys but he, has not, he is not having success. Uh, but little does, does Saul know that his assignment is not just looking for donkeys, that God has a greater assignment for him. He has a greater assignment for him. And, and this assignment that might appear to be mundane, one, one that, that we may not even want to do, this assignment is one that God has put him on so that he might walk into the promise that he has for him. How many of you know that everything that you do every day, it leads you a little closer to what God wants you to be? It leads you a little closer to who God wants you to be. But you have to be transformed before you can do the work of God. And so God is working on Saul and he is bringing him and he will meet somebody who will guide him to where he needs to be. And that's where Samuel comes in. And so Saul uh, is going looking for donkeys. And Samuel is talking to God. Don't you know that somebody is talking to God on your behalf right now? Don't you know that somebody is being uh, blessed so that they might be a blessing to you? Don't you know that you are being blessed so that you might be a blessing to somebody else? We ought to always be willing to bless somebody. We ought to always be willing to do the will of God. And so Samuel and Saul will meet and God's plan will come come into fruition. But before it can happen, Saul needs to be transformed. I, I'm not just mean, I don't just mean change. I, I distinguish between change and transform. You see, when, when you are changed, it, 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 it may not be a complete uh, transformation in your life. Change means you might do a little something different here, there, that you might change and, uh, uh, you can hem a little pair of pants and they're still a pair of pants. But, but when you are transformed, 
It means you are ready for a new assignment. It means that you are ready for a new purpose. That, that what you used to do, you won't do anymore. That you used to be, you won't be anymore. Everything about you will be different because God now has a new assignment in your life. But before you can be ready for your new assignment, you must be changed by God. You must be transformed by the Holy Spirit. So Saul has a conversation with Samuel. And Samuel tells him that, that when you meet, when you meet uh, uh, these people coming off, uh, 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 for, they'll be prophesying. And, and the Holy Spirit now will come upon you. And you will begin to change. You will be a new person. You will be a different person. Samuel tells Saul this, that he'll become a new man. In other words, the spirit will change Saul's character. The spirit of God will change his character. How many of you know that when the spirit comes into your life, when you accept Christ into your heart, he begins to change your character. Many of us want God to come in our lives so that he might change our circumstances, so that he might change our situations. But God is more interested this morning in changing your character than he is changing your situation. He's more interested in who you are than he is what you are living in and all the things around you because he knows that if he changes your character, he will change your behavior. And when he changes your behavior you can change some of the stuff around you some of us can't change the stuff around us because we won't be changed because we want to be who we always are and always have been but God is saying to us this morning that I'm coming into your life to change who you are to change your character to change your behavior because I need somebody different I need somebody new in order to do this assignment Saul has to be transformed in order to do your assignment. You have to be transformed. Yes, when God enters into your life, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will transform you, not only your character, but your behavior. So that now the things you used to do, you no longer do anymore. The, the, the things you used to say, you don't say anymore. When, when you're at the grocery store and the clerk makes you mad and you want to you wanna lay down your religion, you want to say stuff that doesn't come out of your mouth in Sunday school, God will put peace on you. God will put a, put a hold on your tongue so that you might come forth with the blessings of God instead of the, the, the things of the world so that you might bless them and encourage them so that you might be who God called you to be. Yes, the Holy Spirit will transform you in those moments where you want to be somebody else, where you want to act like somebody else, where God needs to be able to use you to make sure that people are able to see him. So what else does the Holy Spirit do when it comes into your life? When it transforms you into a new person, it also changes it also changes your heart. The Holy Spirit, when he comes into your life, he changes your heart. So when Saul turns to walk away and, 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 and leave Samuel after their conversation, after Samuel has prophesied over Saul's life, when he turns to walk away, the Bible tells us in verse 9, it says that Saul now has got a new heart. In other words, your heart must be transformed before you begin the work of God. So God's spirit now moves in Saul's heart so that Saul's desires becomes what God wants them to be. Your desires need to be God's desires. Too many of us, we want God to fulfill what we want. We want God to do what we want to do. I, I, at the end of the day, your heart must be in line with God. Your heart must be poured out for God to fill it up so that everything you think is in line with the word of God. So that all of your prayers, 
are in line with the word of God so that all of your deeds are in line with the word of God. And that doesn't happen until your heart changes because out of the heart comes all of those things that we need God to do in our lives. All of those things that he desires for us to do. So he needs to fill your heart with his word. He needs to fill your heart with his promise. He needs to fill your heart with his power so that you can live like he has called you to live. To the kingdom of God, uh, the heart is, is, is our seat of emotions. It is where we, 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 we think, breathe, and do all of the things that, that God pours in us. And so God needs to give you a kingdom heart. How many of you this morning have a kingdom heart? If you have a kingdom heart, that means your heart is fit for God to use. It is fit for God to bless you. It is fit for God to use you to bless somebody else. If you have a kingdom heart, you are well on your way to fulfilling your assignment for God. Saul cannot lead God, leads God, lead God's people until his heart is transformed. You cannot do God's will until your heart is transformed. Some of us need to get rid of our old hearts. Some of us need to pour out what's in there and let God fill it up with his love, with his joy, with his peace, with his desires. Has your heart been changed this morning? Finally, before I go to my seat, I need you to understand that when the spirit comes to transform you for your new assignment, it will also transform your whole life for the kingdom work, for the work that God wants you to do. So in verse 7, when you see Paul, uh, Saul talking to Samuel, he tells him that whatever your hand finds to do, whatever is necessary, whatever comes before you and needs to be done, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and get it done. Samuel is talking about kingdom work. He is talking about kingdom work, kingdom assignments. Whatever you have to do, God is going to give you the power to do it. There are some of us sitting here this morning. We're wondering how we're going to get it done. We're wondering how we're going to fulfill our assignment. We're wondering how we're going to uh, uh, bless and pray over all the things that God has put on your plate. I want you to know this morning that God has given you power to transform your life. He has given you the power to move, the power to breathe, the power to carry heavy loads, the power to carry burdens, the, the power to do things that you never thought you would eat, be able to do. God has come into your life so that he can make all the crooked edges straight, that he can make level all the hills in your life. He has come into your life so that you might not be overcome by the things that come against you. He has come into your life so that the fires that burn around you may not burn you, that you might go through the waters, but you might not drown, that you might go through the fire that you may not be burned, that you might overcome all the challenges that the world might throw after you. Yeah, he's talking about kingdom work. So that if you are on your assignment, doing kingdom work, God has already given you what you need. It is on the inside of you. All you need to do is unleash the power that God has put in you. All you need to do is unleash the power that God has put before you. And you unleash the power of God in your life by trusting the spirit that moves in you. By praying to God every day that he might rightly give you the vision that he wants for your life. All of those things come together and you move in your assignment. You are now powerful whenever you move. Everything you touch turns to gold. In the bad times, you are able to stand. In the good times, you look the same. No matter what's happening around you, God is able to bless you. God is able to do whatever you need done in your life because he's transformed you for the assignment that you have before you. You are now empowered to do kingdom work. You can't do kingdom work. You can't live the kingdom life until God's spirit has transformed your heart, your mind, your spirit. He needs to change everything about you. 
leave who you used to be in the back. Everybody that meets you from your past, they want to tell you all the things that you used to be, all the things that you used to do. They want to talk about you. They don't want to let you be used by God. They remember how you used to act up, how you used to act a fool. How, I'm talking about me now. They, they remember all the bad things I used to do. But I came by this morning to tell you that God has transformed my life. I'm a new creature. I'm a new person. And I live for the king this morning. I have a kingdom heart, a kingdom mind. And I'm living kingdom life. I, I am doing the will of God this morning. And whatever I used to be, it's never going to be what I am anymore. Everything that I am, I stand on. The word of God. Everything that I am, I get from God's power. Everything that I might be. And y'all, I'm not perfect. But everything that I am, I am because he lives in me. He lives in me. And I want you to know he lives in you. And if Christ lives in you, the Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will give you exactly what you need to be who God has called you to be. He will transform your life for your kingdom assignment. That's all I have for y'all this morning. If you have your assignment, you ought to go do the work of God this morning. If you have your assignment, if you have that received your assignment, I need you to ask God right now, for what it is he needs for you to do for who you he wants you to be and I promise you he will answer that call this morning he will bless you with your new assignment and he will transform your heart and your mind so that you might fulfill every word of your destiny let us pray father thank you right now thank you for this word thank you for who you are Thank you for blessing us, oh God, as only you can. We thank you for filling our hearts and our minds with your word and your power. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and what it does in our lives. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and how he moves and how he does what he does. We thank you right now. We ask for peace, joy, power, and we ask for your patience. Even when we mess up, we ask for you to be patient with us, God. Give us your grace and your mercy. In Christ's name we pray. All of God's people say, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Did our hearts not burn? The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit for the Lord. Let Him take control of your life. Peace and love, the best thing that we can give people here is love. Amen? Because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So who helps believeth in Him and know that God raised Jesus from the dead? Then thy too shall be saved. Amen. That was a word from the Lord today. He's talking to me. He's talking to everybody. Don't go back to what you used to be or what people say that you might be. But hear the voice of the Lord and let him lead and guide your life. You know, he can change. He can change you. He can. I'm a truly witness. You won't do everything like you used to do. Everything becomes new and different. So be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we will get ready for our communion. Amen. If everybody's been served, if not, raise your hand and an usher or either a trustee will come around and give you your condiments. Amen. serve if not raise your hand and someone will come around and serve communion we have 
have a hand over here, ushers. Amen. We're waiting to everybody be served. Everybody's been served. Let us bow and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we're about to take the Holy Commune, Lord God. We ask that you turn this from a into a spiritual use, from a commercial use, Lord. Father, let us be let us talk with you. And if anything is in our heart, Lord God, that is not right, let us make it right with you, Lord. Because if you don't, and you hold animosity in your heart, the Lord looks at your heart. We want our hearts to be pure and right when we take the communion of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for your blood that you shed on Calvary's Hill. We thank you, Lord, for your body was broken, Father God. We are here. And you say as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of you, Lord God. So we want to thank you, Father. Amen. On that profession as he talked, he said, take ye the bread and break it and eat all of it. This represents my broken body. Then he took the cup and he held it up and he said, this is the blood that I've shed down on Calvary's here. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Take the cup and drink all of it. And this represents his blood that he shed on Calvary's here. Now that we finished commune, this is the end of it. We want to open up an invitation to Christ. We want you to come and be led by the Holy Spirit. We'd ask if anyone needs prayer. However, you can come to the front and we'll pray with you. But if there's one, let them come. Don't look to your left or your right. But if you want to give your life to Christ, just come forward. And if you have any sickness in your body or you know somebody, and I know we all know somebody that's sick, you can get out your cards and come forward and we'll pray with you also. Is there one? If not, we will continue with our outline of our program. This is the time. If you have any lawn chairs, please pack them up. Help us to reach our social media Bridging the Gap goals by subscribing, linking, and sharing to both our Rehoboth Baptist Church Facebook and YouTube page. Amen. And if all hearts and minds are clear, we ask that you all, all persons, 
receiving food will exit to your right. You will be directed according. All vehicles, please follow the signal and directions of the trustees or exiting the parking lot. We look forward in seeing you next Sunday. Same time, same place, and same peace and joy. So remember to love, share your love and your peace with whom you know. And this concludes the end of our services. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you for coming. Join me. Love you.